against former champ Lupe Pentor right after this. Mexico City, one of the treasures of North America. The people are proud and their heritage is rich, dating back nearly 2,000 years to the ancient civilizations of the Aztecs and the Mayans. Today, that proud heritage lives on in the art and culture of the country, and also in the nation's sports, especially boxing, where success is measured by machismo in the ring. Mexico's legacy of boxing greats includes champions like Ruben Olivares, Carlos Zarate, master of the knockout, with 53 KOs in his 56 fights. Pepino Cuevas, the former welterweight champ, with a devastating left hook. Alfonso Zamora, another knockout artist who once KO'd 29 consecutive opponents. And the 1981 Boxer of the Year, the late Salvador Sanchez. Now the tradition is passed on to a new generation, with undefeated WBC super featherweight champ Julio Cesar Chavez and Super Bantamweight Champion Juan Kid Mesa, a studied, overpowering puncher, who today battles yet another Mexican legend when he defends his crown against former Bantamweight Champion Lupe Pintor. An idol here in Mexico City, he will have the hometown crowd behind him when he takes to the ring here at the Palacio de los Deportes in Mexico City. the Palace of Sports awaiting this WBC scheduled 12-round championship bout for Lupe Pintor and Juan Mesa, the excitement of fighting in Mexico City. And a crowd of more than 10,000 has gathered here this Sunday afternoon in order to be in on what should be one of the action fights of the year in the country of Mexico and perhaps in all of boxing. Hello, everybody. Tim Ryan with Gil Clancy and Sugar Ray Leonard here ringside in Mexico City. And Gil, I guess the question mark with Pintor, he had an eight-month retirement. He's 30 years of age. He has had 62 professional fights. Maybe he's a little used up and not capable of handling a guy like Mesa. Well, Tim, it's not only the age, but it's the fact that he's had a lot of tough fights. And there's also been a rumor that he's had trouble making the weight. If he's further weakened himself by making weight, he could be in a lot of trouble. Because Juan Mesa is a very strong guy and a good puncher. But the one thing that may be in Pintor's favor is the fact that, in my opinion, when a fighter gets old, speed bothers him more than anything else. And Mesa is not a fast guy, so it could be a heck of a fight. All right, Ray Leonard, the Juan Mesa is from Mexicali. He knows this whole crowd here, certainly 90. 99% is going to be for Pintor. You never had to face a hostile crowd. How do you think Mace is going to deal with it? Believe it or not, I experienced that whole time fans Dick Eckler in Boston. And because of the reception I received from the crowd, I guess I tried too hard, I lost my cool, the fight crowd tells me they're expected. So Mace is just the exact opposite. Keep his cool, block out the crowd, and fight a controlled fight against Pintor. Well, Ray Leonard beat Dick Eckler in his hometown. Mesa says that he can do it here in Mexico City, even though this is the hometown of the former Bantamweight champion, Lupe Pintor. Well, for Lupe Pintor, an opportunity to reclaim a championship, to move on to 122 pounds. He is a former Bantamweight champion. At 118, he had eight successful title defenses at that weight. And there has been, as Gil indicated, some problem with him making the 122 pound limit. Indeed, he's saying if he wins here, that he may move on up to featherweight and challenge for the featherweight crown. So at 30 years of age, weight is definitely a problem for Lupe Pintor. The advantage is clearly the fact that this crowd here in the Sports Palace in Mexico City will be cheering almost to a man and woman for Lupe Pintor. He is a living legend in Mexican boxing, and many of the men you saw in our little opening piece a few min minutes ago are in attendance tonight to cheer for Pintor. Bazooka Limon, Carlos Zarate, many of the other Mexican stars are in attendance for this bout. Pintor being led in by the traditional mariachi band. comes the champion, Juan Kid Mesa, with his entourage in red trim. Pintor in the ring, Lupe Pintor. There is the challenger, former Bantamweight champion, father of five children, lives in the suburb of Mexico City, and among the very uh, vociferous boxing fans in Mexico, he is a revered figure. Kid Mesa making his way to the ring and made an interesting comment. He wanted judges from other than Mexico. 
And when questioned about that, since he was also boxing a Mexican in Mexico City, he said, yes, I understand that I'm also Mexican, but he said, Pintor is a Mexican-Mexican. And so he wanted to have some foreign officials working the fight. That request was denied. Here is the champion wearing the sombrero, Juan Kid Mesa. belt that is at stake here this afternoon brought in by the champion Juan Kid Mesa from Mexicali and so we'll be back for this 12 round WBC championship bout after these words from your local station this is CBS the preparation is over now they're ready the world's finest competitors going head to head for all the marbles and you don't want to miss it the winston tour if you only see one event this year this is the one and now it's time get your tickets today winston tour rodeo you've never seen anything like it Introducing a Coors like you never knew before. New Coors Extra Cold. This ain't no weak, meat, low-key, wishy-washy beer. You'll agree, this is Coors Extra Gold. It's the beer with the taste you can see. And only Coors can make it so easy drinking. Yeah, this is bolder, colder, broad-shouldered beer the way beer ought to be. This is Coors Extra Gold. It's the beer with the taste you can see. Join Dave Cody for sports weeknights at 6 and 10. All right, welcome back to the Sports Palace. Palacio de los Deportes in Mexico City as we await the Super Bantamweight Championship of the WBC with the champion Juan Kid Mesa from Mexicali and the challenger Lupe Pintor. And let's go to our ring announcer, Agustin Alvarez Leonis. In the Ciudad de Mexico. Pelea a 12 rounds por el Campeonato Mundial Super Gallo, versión Consejo Mundial de Boxeo. El referee es Octavio Mayrán. Y ahora en la esquina azul, colocado en el cuarto lugar de las listas del Consejo Mundial de Boxeo. 53 peleas ganadas, 7 perdidas, 2 empates y 41 caos. Pesando 55 kilos 330 gramos, de blanco con vivos azules, de Coajimalpa, Ciudad de México, México, Lupe Pinto. En la esquina roja, el campeón mundial con un récord de 43 peleas ganadas. Seis perdidas y 35 knockouts, pesando 55 kilos 300 gramos, en negro con rayas plateadas de Mexicali, México, Juan Gil Mesa. You hear the whistles, which are boos here in Mexico for the champion Mesa. This crowd is for Pintor. And Mesa, 29 years of age, almost as old as Pintor, who was 30. And you see they each came in right at the limit of 122 pounds. The reach advantage to the taller Mesa stands 5, 8, and 3 quarters. Now, in the case of Pintor, that 122 was not easily gained. I watched him work on Wednesday, and uh, he was wearing... A sweatsuit with a turtleneck and jackets and uh, boxed for about five rounds uh, with uh, uh, all of that apparel on as he was still trying to get down to the weight. The reported weight that day was four pounds over, but he did make it. What did it cost him? Well, we'll find out as this fight goes along. Now, condition-wise, Mesa is not from Mexico City. With an altitude of 7,000 feet, Pintor is comfortable here. This is where he lives. Mesa has been training here for about 11 or 12 days. He lives in Mexicali, and when he's training for a fight, he goes up to Los Angeles, where his manager and trainer, Jimmy Montoya, lives. And uh, so he will perhaps have some difficulty with the altitude here. And indeed, uh, they were going to bring an oxygen tank to his corner uh, if he needed it. I'm looking into the corner now and do not see it, but uh, we'll uh, certainly know if it 
becomes uh, something of a factor as the fight goes along. Octo Octavio Mehran is the referee. The three judges are from Mexico. Jose Juan Guerra, Abraham Chavarria, and Arsenio Garcia. Tim, the altitude is a factor. I was here in 1975 for the Pan Am Games, and uh, at the two rounds, I mean, it, your mouth is dry, your throat is burning, so the same thing may apply to Mesa. Between these two boxers, 111 professional bouts, 76 knockouts between them. 29-year-old Juan Mesa, who took his time winning a title, and Lupe Pintor, who has been a champion and wants another crown. You know, Tim, there's only one year different in their ages, but Pintor has been through the mill. He's old as a fighter, where Mesa has not been used up, hasn't had that many fights. You saw, those of you who follow CBS coverage of boxing, one kid Mesa scored that big upset over Jaime Garza, one round knockout, getting off the floor to do it. And has since defended with a six round stoppage of Mike Ayala, his first title defense. This is his second title defense and his fourth championship effort as he had a losing cause against Wilfredo Gomez in 1982. All the boy that received coming to the ring it didn't seem to bother him at all. It bothered me when I fought Dick Eggman. And I just tried too hard and I was trying to take it out on Dick Eggman. Here Mays is taking his time. He seemed to be very relaxed. And he looks quite, quite at home man. that factor during his training a few days ago and he said he wasn't concerned about it. He wouldn't block the crowd out. He said he was a little concerned about the altitude. He thought a few more days would provide enough of an adjustment for him. No domination by the champion. It's okay for him to say he's going to block the crowd out, but once you get in there, it's a little different. Both guys are very, very tight right now, both being very cautious. Under a minute to go in round number one, scheduled for 12. Because Pinto is uh, about two inches shorter than Mays, he has to come in as a reach in. So that could prove to be disastrous because what's going to happen, he's going to give uh, Mays a type of leverage behind his punches that he needs. Well, the key, the key Ray, is going to be Pinto's jab. If he can start reaching, reaching Mesa with that jab, again, without reaching too far, it could be a good night for Pinto. Under the 30-second mark we go. Fighting a taller fighter, it requires a lot of feints, a lot of body movement to get inside, get closer. We're into the final seconds of round number one. The champion. The champion, Juan Kid Mesa in the silver trunks. And on the left of your screen, the challenger, Lupe Pintor, his 11th championship appearance. He won the Bantamweight title in 1979, defended it eight times, was stopped by Wilfredo Gomez in his first try for the Super Bantamweight title back in December of 82, and getting a second chance at the age of 30. Good left counter by the champion, Mesa. Best known for his big right hand, and Pintor best known for a left hook. But Tim, that's what Pinto can't do. He can, just can't rush in with his hands down. He's going to be hit time and time again by Mesa. He has to throw some jabs like Gil stated and also get some more, some feints. When he jabs, he's going to have to move Mesa with the jab. If he touches him with the jab, he's going to get hit with some good counter punches. It has to be a stiff jab the way that one there was, Ray. I'm looking for Mesa to throw a, a counter right hand, lead off right, because of the way that Pinto is dropping the left hand as he throws it. We're in round number two, scheduled for 12 under the WBC rules. 12-round championship distance. Warning from referee Mehran about a hit from champion Mesa. All right, here's where the hometown could be at a disadvantage. You're starting to shout, Pintor, Pintor. That could take him out of his battle plan, make him careless, make him more aggressive. now is trying to measure Pinto with that right hand. He's throwing that jab two, three times and trying to set, make him a stationary target. I think that generally Mesa's style, although against Jaime Garza, he didn't have time to get into his style. Under a 
minute to go in round number two. He's exerting some pressure now. All right, there's where Pinto does not want to be on the ropes. Good body shot by Mesa. Good stand-up boxer. we go in the second round. Champion starting to exert himself a little more here in, in terms of a, an attempt to dominate the challenger. Then coming to the end, round two. Breaks with his chin with some uppercuts. And he's doing that now. Juan Mesa handled by Jimmy Montoya, who also has champions Richard Sandoval and Hector Camacho. Lupe Pintor managed by the legendary Cuyo Hernandez, now 75 years of age and in the corner. A stable of more than 100 boxers and many of them have been world champions. Pintor fighting under the shadow of the loss of his trainer a week ago was murdered here in Mexico City, Tony Torres. And so this has been a difficult time for Lupe Pintor. Good stiff jab by Pintor. That, that got Mesa's attention, Tim. And that's what he has to do. He, when he lands that jab, it has to be stiff. Left-hand counter from the champion scored. We're in round three, scheduled for 12. was a dangerous move by uh, Mazes just now. He tried to throw a left hook and he left himself wide open for a left hook by uh, Pinto. I like that combination of Pinto. Hook to the body right here to the head. I like the jab, Gil, because of the snap and Mazes' head back. Well, he has an educated left jab, right? That's for sure. But he has to follow up. Pinto, after he throws the left jab, he has to stay. Keep going. And put his punches together. Short right hand to finish it. Jenny Montoya has got, done a very good job of short. Hit all this hurt. Rocked by a right hand. Rocked by a right hand. I was about to mention that Pinto has a chin of rock because he was he was the way to go, man. They still toe to toe bang. Went 14 rounds. That was a great fight won by Gomez, but Pinto covered himself in glory. I was going to say that Mesa's punches are a lot sharper and shorter than they used to be, than the Mesa I remember. Matoya's done a good, a good job with him. Round number four, and Pintor's slow to get off the stool because the referee Mayron insisted on wiping off with some water and presumably Vaseline before allowing him to come to the center of the ring. We're in the fourth round scheduled for 12. The referee Octavio Mehran from Mexico. All three judges are from Mexico. One from Monterey, one from Tampico, and one from Mexico City. Mesa is sharper than I've seen. I think plus of the S it is with Jim Montoya because he's done a great job with Sandoval and Camacho. He's had Mesa for some time. Got him along slowly. Needed a lot of development as a professional. Became champion. It's Jaime Garza at the age of 29. Those right hands thrown by Mesa are starting to rock Pinto. Oh, good combination by Mesa. Big left hand. The difference in the fight is that Pinto is throwing one punch at a time, and Mesa is throwing five or six. Look at the jab of Pinto. It snaps the head of Mesa. So far, Ray, right, that's all he's shown us a jab, though. We, we haven't seen too much else from Pinto. Pintor's last fight was the 10th of June this year, a 10-round draw against Javier Marquez, not a household name even in Mexico. Fourth ranked by the WBC, getting this title opportunity and facing a tough champion in Mesa. Izquierda. Vamos, 
I'm watching the way that Pinto is going down. The perfect punch to get him is an uppercut in the right hand, straight right hand. The, the uppercut raises the chin, and the right hand will catch him. All right, you see, Pinto is allowing Mesa to punch without punching back. You have to make a guy pay. You have to make a miss, and when you make a miss, you have to nail it. Dug a low blow and recognized him. Apologized with his head before the referee admonished him. Pushed back by Mesa. There's, that is dangerous being on those ropes. Pintor content to stay there now lets himself be pushed to the corner. Mesa firing leather and not landed a clean shot, however. But Mesa throwing what really wild punches. He needs to take his time and, and make his uh, punches count. Pintor just calmly walked his way out, jabbing. Now Mesa lands a combination. Oh, oh and another. Good punches by Mesa. He was dazed by that right hand, Tim. He's just so much busier than Pintor. Under the 32nd mark we are in round number four. And Mesa is starting to look a little tired, Tim. Throwing a lot of leather. Coming to the end of round four. This is round number five, scheduled for 12. And now Mesa a little slow off the stool as uh, they have to wipe some extra water off him. Mesa has a slight cut over the right eyebrow near the corner of his eye. Mesa is hurt! No question about it! Left foot hurt him! He's hurt, Tim! Pintor all over him. With an opening, Curry has Mesa against the ropes. Mesa now punching back, but not with a lot of authority. Pintor in another way here. The crowd on its feet here for the hero Pintor, who's turned this around with a fifth round. Another left hand by Pintor. Pintor, Mesa is ready to go, Tim! Two big clean punches now. And he's fighting back. Oh, is he fighting back? Mesa with a combination of his own. Pintor stays right there with him. Mesa now trying to gather with a big right hand. An uppercut. Mesa to the Mesa back on his feet. And a big opening right hand by Pintor with a lead. And Bob up the champion. Lupe Pintor. Mesa firing back. Hand by Mesa, Tiffany has no legs. Mesa gamely on his feet. Pintor trying to find the openings to send him down again. Now Mesa firing back. Tim, but he's tired. Mesa is tired besides being hurt. Pintor keeping the pressure on, seeing the champion in trouble. All of his championship experience at work now his 11th title fight Pinto has to land one big clean one now under a minute to go in the fifth round remember we've had four short rounds here so far five seconds each Pinto banging away underneath watch, over the top watch the left hook of Pinto because Mesa still lean towards that in that direction Mesa still on wobbly legs trying to punch might be better advised to grab Pintor. What do you think, Ray? Well, he needs to tie him up exactly. He's, he's on Christian now, Tim. Under the 30-second mark. Mesa trying to punch, but nothing on it. Landed a left. Pintor is definitely a technician now. He's taking his time. He's not rushing himself. Working the body. Come to the head. But this round seems like forever. Remember, Pintor stunned the champion. Montoya leaps out, grabbing his champion Mesa, trying to bring him back alive, trying to get some energy into his champion who took a lot of punishment in the fifth round. A big round for Pintor with two knockdowns and a near victory, and this place would have gone bananas as it was the crowd on their feet through all of that fifth round. Tim, 
I, I mentioned that Mesa was tired. I think that affected him, but Pitt thought through beautiful combinations. Left hook underneath, right hand on the chin. Beautiful combination. They're giving Pinto oxygen in the corner now. Yes, they are, and now they're bringing in oxygen for Juan Mesa, but it is interesting. We, we mentioned this factor before the fight. Pintor, uh, who is acclimatized here, also using oxygen. Now let's see the first knockdown. It came seconds after the bell. A sneaky left-hand uppercut by Pintor. Right hand behind it. And down went Mesa early in this fifth round. Now we're out for round number six. The champion, Mesa, still looks to me a little shaky-legged. See, Mesa went straight at Pintor just now. His head is still not clear to him. That is his best punch. Pinto has definitely shown the experience on his belt. He's taking his time and he's using that jab. He gets inside and he works the body and comes to the head. Most of the experts predicted six to eight rounds with Mesa scoring a knockout. Pinto is the man now in the sixth round with Mesa in trouble. And you have to remember that Pinto expended a lot of energy last round. Well, that conditioning factor of having to get down to the weight, struggling in the last week, we'll see whether that takes effect. They did give him oxygen between rounds. All right, Pinto is trying to set up that right hand against him. He's showing Mesa that left hook, and he's going to try to nail him with that right hand. Well, we've seen this guy's guts before, getting off the floor to beat Jaime Garza when he won the crown. We know he's strong, can take a punch. Two knockdowns in the fifth round by Pintor and Mesa trying to gather himself back and he lands a good right hand. Mesa's starting to come back now, but he's still making the mistake of dropping that left hand. And that was the punch that put him in some serious trouble thrown by uh, Pintor. Pintor should try to put a couple of punches together now, Ray. Look at the jab, Gil. Solid oh, left jab. That's that solid jab. That's what Pintor's famous for. Uh, Pinto is doing out to him. He's just getting the second win. But in the meanwhile, Ray, he may be letting Mesa off the hook. Right hand by the champion. He's got the neck of Pintor as he pulled back. Mesa in silver. Lupe Pintor in white with blue trim. It looks to me as if Mesa is all the way back now, Tim. Looks pretty good. Trying to land that overhand right. That's his most dangerous shot. Pintor certainly into a very studied attack at the moment here, taking his time. Uh, Mesa's legs are still not there, Tim. Well, actually, Pintor is just walking, just stalking his opponent. And uh, when he has an opportunity, he tries to overpower Mesa. And you'd be surprised at the power behind the left jail of Pintor. Under the 30-second mark we go in round number six, scheduled for 12, the championship distance of the WBC. Pinton needs to follow up with that jab. As he throws a jab, come with the right hand and left hook. Mesa, meanwhile, lands two combinations of his own. <laughs> now Pintor digging to the body, but didn't land a clean one. In the free, uh, taking some of the water off the chest of Pintor, Mesa lands a left hook, and now smiling at Pintor. Jimmy Montoya's manager and trainer hollered across the stool to us and said, we're going to win. Mesa does look fresher and stronger. Well, Tim, I gave Mesa the last round. I just think Pintor did not work enough. I did as well. Uh, it wasn't so much what Mesa did as what Pintor didn't do after his big fifth round with two knockdowns. Well, Tim, the sixth round, I said that uh, Pintor was uh, really getting his second win, but actually he was getting a breather. He spent a lot of energy in that fifth round. Yeah, he took a breather. We'll see now. Uh, whether or not he can bring himself back. Mesa clearly looks fresher than he did in round six. Just the, the, the fact that he's throwing so many more punches than Pinto is winning them the rounds. Well, as far as, uh, as we can say on our scorecard, the three judges, all from Mexico, may have a different view, as often happens. And remember the challenger Pintor, the hometown hero in Mexico City. Well, that had to punch. Everybody gets on their feet. That had to be a three-point round, though, Tim, with those two knockdowns. Oh, absolutely. There's a cut now. Yes, right there eye. is. The right eye of Pintor, and Mesa lands a combination. Backing Pintor to the ropes. Now, watch how aggressive Mesa becomes because he saw the blood. 
Hentor fighting from the rope, trying to land the big left, but it's Mace is staying busy. He's not getting a nervous, Tim. Mace, because he's standing up on his toes. You notice where he reaches up, reaches high. Hentor just wipes some blood away, so some of it is going into his right eye. And this fight is now turned back the other way. You might see uh, some desperation now in Pintor because the cut seems to be pretty nasty. Landed a right hand, Pintor, but Mesa shook it off and drove him back. Well, Pinto is going to have to nail him again. I don't think Pinto can win this fight on points. He's not busy enough. A slip is ruled on that one as Mesa went down with his back to us. Under a minute to go, round number seven. Scheduled for 12. Tim Ryan, Sugar Ray Leonard, Gil Clancy live from Mexico City. The battle we expected, Pintor and Mesa. The combination has been working for Pintor. has been under and over, under with the left hand and over with the right hand. Tim, that's an angry cut. A well, lot Pintor's more blood. Right Pintor counter right hand. And a good solid left jab. Some blood from the nose of Mesa, the champion. Under the 32nd mark we go. Good combination by Mesa. Rocking back the head of Pintor. Left hand by Pintor. Final seconds of round seven. Punishing action here in the seventh. Big right hand by Pintor. Beautiful right hand. Number eight, it has been a war the last few rounds from five on when Pintor the challenger knocked the champion down twice, but Mesa has rallied. All right, Tim, I gave Mesa the last round again just on the work ethic, but at the end of the round, he looked like a drunken sailor walking back to his corner. Pintor is going to have to hurt him and get him out of there, I think, to win this fight. An angry cut, though, by the right eye of the challenger, Pintor. They put a lot of guck on it between rounds. Mesa trying to get at it. Solid left by the champion, Mesa. Both fighters have definitely had staying power, so it's going to take a combination, not just one punch to put them out. There's that combination. Left hook, right hand. That's the combination. If I was in, if I was in Pintor's corner, I'd have him work that combination overtime. It's been working the whole time for Pinto. I didn't know for Just doesn't do it enough, Ray. Pintor is still forcing this round, and Mesa on wobbly legs takes a left hand that rocks him back into the ropes. Combination by Pintor. Now, Pintor needs to stay on top of uh, Mesa, not let him off the hook. It's been a couple times he had Mesa in trouble, and he let him off the hook. Mesa looked to his corner for instructions from Montoya, and now let's a combination fly. You know, it's funny, Tim. Mesa's hands are okay, his hands are fast, but his legs are shot. Just doesn't seem to have any legs. Again, Tim, you notice the way that Mesa leans towards the left hook thrown by Pintor. It's going to happen every time. He needs to bring that right hand up. I'm surprised that Pintor is not trying to throw more combination punches. A little too cautious. Good right hand by Mesa. Pintor now is starting to breathe from the mouth. Good indication of fatigue. Yeah, yes, Ray, but uh, Mesa is uh, barely gasping for breath. He's dead tired. Left hand landed by Pintor. There may be a cut under the right eye of Pintor now, in addition to the one over the eyebrow at the corner. Under a minute we go in the eighth round. See, Pintor allows Mesa to throw too many punches without counting. There was seven punches that time, no counter from Pintor. Good combination landed by Mesa. Mesa, over the top. Didn't seem to move Pinto over the door right. But Pinto has that good chin, Tim. Does he ever? Under the 30-second mark we go. Pinto with 62 fights. There's your combination again, Ray. Toe-to-toe -to -toe they go in the center of the ring. I might try a combination deal. It's a beautiful punch. Yes, it is. Final seconds. Round number eight. Ooh. Left hand by Pintor. And another. The Round number nine. The champion Juan Mason Silver. The challenger Lupe Pintor and White. Tim Ryan, Sugar Ray Leonard, Gil Clancy live from Mexico City. And into the ninth round where most of the experts did not expect the fight to reach. Uh, Tim, they did not do a very good job on Pintor's eye. It's wide open already. And Mesa's little cut that occurred several rounds ago has not been a factor for him at all. I mean, I'm sure that Pintor cannot see out of that right eye. Well, they tried to uh, refresh Mesa in the corner of Matoya, 
with uh, cold towels on his back and oxygen. Pintor also used oxygen between rounds, and this altitude having its effect on both of these 122 pounders. A pool of water in each corner, they've been throwing water on them. That cut of Pintor is not getting any better. In fact, the blood is starting to flow into the eyes, so it's starting to bother him. Well, that's great. He should let it all hang out and try to get Mesa out of there, which I think he can do because Mesa's legs just aren't there. But he's a little too cautious, taking his time a little too much. Mesa needs to concentrate on that area. Work to the left. Work, throw more left hooks. Well, Ray, I, I used to tell my guys when I had a guy cut, don't mind the cut because the guy would be trying to protect the cut and he'd leave himself wide open someplace else. I just saw that same combination, Gil, thrown by Pinto, under and over. Now a little more blood from the cut of Mesa, but Mesa, the busier man, as he has been throughout the fight, with the exception of round five, when Pintor sent him to the canvas twice. Pintor should try to punch with him inside right now. Instead, he lets Mesa throw those combinations without answering back. One Mesa and his second title defense of the WBC Super Bantamweight crowd. And a good combination by the champion. Again, because Pintor does not answer back. He allows him to do it. More blood from the cut over the right eye of the challenger, Pintor. Under a minute we go in the ninth round, scheduled for 12. Pinto's mistake, uh, Tim, he's trying to load up with one punch. One punch is not going to do it. It's going to take a combination. All of the action in this round in the center of the ring. There's seven, eight, nine punches by Mesa without a return from Pinto. Right hand lead just grazed the chin of Mesa. Angry cut now over the right eye of Pintor. Under the 32nd mark we go. One Kid Mesa from Mexicali, Mexico against the hometown hero, Juan Pintor, or Lupe Pintor, former Bantamweight champion. Big round for Mesa. Coming to the end of the ninth round, If you just ask for a light beer, I'll have a light. You never know what you'll get. That's me packing the car. Best vacation ever. Is Rock City, Texas, L.A. All in three days. Oh, Bud Light. Here I am in Death Valley. That's me looking for water. So if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, wait, there's more. Ask for Bud Light, because everything else. Give me a light. It's just a light. That's me packing the car. Best vacation. We are back live in the Palacio de los Deportes in Mexico City, a tired-looking champion. We have him ahead on points on our card, despite the two knockdowns scored by Pintor in round five. But it is a very fatigued-looking, and there's the The champion down for the third time. Pintor, no doubt, seeing those legs as we have. Measuring, waiting to get that famous left hook into action. And he's starting to challenge uh, Pintor again, which is wrong. He needs to clear his head. There's that combination, Ray. Same one. A uh, beautiful combination, Gil. And on and over. Watch. Look at Pitts all work, though. And look at Mesa. Look at Mesa Mesa go battling back. What a fight. Into the 10th round. Mesa certainly not cautious after a knockdown. Look at the legs. Look at the legs of Mesa. Look at the legs under him. Mesa trying to get some legs under himself and just can't do it. He just keeps throwing leather. At this point now, Tim, is all instinct and determination. Mesa history. So I talk about Mexican machismo even to the point of cliche, but you're seeing it demonstrated here by both fighters. Tim, but I'm surprised that Pintor can't get him out of there. He has a target that doesn't have a leg under him. What is he waiting for? Mesa just keeps punching back. Now, I know the right hand keeps dropping of Mesa, so watch for the left hook of Pinto because that's what put him down. Pinto is setting it up. There it is again, Mary. Left He's setting it up. Left hook on the right hand on the chin all day long. He's, he dips in and he throws the left hook. Juan Mesa, another big left hand by Pintor. Watch it, watch it throw it again, Tim, because he's setting himself up. Mesa just stays there in trouble range trying to land a big punch of his own. Pinto puts his whole body behind that left hook. But he had to put his punches together. It's been proven that Mesa can't take a punch. 
It's amazing that Mace's hands still work. His legs don't work, but his hands work. Under a minute to go in the 10th round. What, what is Pinto waiting for? That's what I'd like to know. Maybe he hasn't got the energy. Well, he, exactly, Tim. He's been a lot of energy putting uh, Mace on the canvas. And he did in round five, too, and hasn't had a lot of hustle since then. This is when you have to reach down and bring it up. These warriors battling at 7,000 feet, both feeling the effects of the altitude. Big shot by Pintor. Under the 30-second mark, He's and Mesa just falls back against the rope. He should stay on now, Tim. He has him. Probably he doesn't have he to punch him hard. Round. He doesn't have to hit him hard to knock him out now. Just has to put him together. What I don't know fight. whether I agree because Mesa keeps getting up and look, he keeps punching back. Mesa punching. Tim, this is the last hurrah for Mesa. Pintor back into the corner. Unbelievable. Now, let's go back and see the knockdown on the 10th round. And again, Lupe Pintor unable to follow up either from lack of uh, energy or because he feels he's going to get him before the distance. That would seem unlikely. There's that left hand. And so we will head into round number 11 with Lupe Pintor having scored knockdowns twice in round five, once in round 10. We've scored all of the other rounds, but one for the champion. Tim, I would not want to be a judge in this fight. So we're into the 11th round. Jimmy Montoya working feverishly on his champion, Mesa in the corner. Mesa comes out, bright eyed and has been throwing punches continuously, but has no legs underneath him. Well, Tim, when he went down, when Mesa went to the canvas, I guess everyone figured it was it. Oh, he reached down and put something back. And he just scored a double combination against Pintor, landed back a solid left of his own. And a right hand lead by Pintor. That's what I'm talking about, Tim. So you notice he, he followed up with the right hand. Pinto was able to connect. Mesa still looking as though he does not have much in the way of legs holding him up. But the more we say it, the more he stands up. All right, but Pinto is not moving his hands, Tim. He should be moving his hands. If he's not doing anything else, he should be using that stiff left jab. The left hook landed there from Pinto. Pinto uh, countering, but Mesa still again uh, the busier boxer. Body shots by Pintor. What a game display by both these fighters. Tim Mesa was hurt by those body shots. Now bleeding from a cut inside the mouth. The champion Mesa. What I see now, Tim, Mesa will do better taking the fight to um, Pintor. Because outside, those uppercuts, the right hand's been doing a job. He just has nothing left, and Pintor is bouncing on his legs. That's the combination again, once again. But Mesa will just not hide. He hasn't grabbed him. He hasn't tried to move away. He stays right there. Pinto has been uh, really ripping those right-hand uppercuts to the body of Mesa. And as you see it now, there is no snap at all in the punches of Mesa. Well, those who are writing off Lupe Pintor because of age and, and uh, the number of tough fights he's had, an eight-month layoff, here he is in the 11th round against Juan Mesa. Under a minute to go. Pinto needs to let that right hand fly after he throws that uppercut. I did not expect Pintor to be in this fight this long. Tim Mesa is in bad shape right now. Very bad shape. Ready to go. However, he keeps punching. Pintor unable to get the right combinations together to finish him off. He's a little too cautious, Tim. That is a nasty cut on the right eye of Louis Pinto. Tim, Ray, believe me, they're not going to stop this fight because of the cut now. I would have just gone into it. They're both bleeding. Mace is bleeding barely from the mouth. Under 30 seconds to go in the 11th round. Scheduled for 12 under the WBC championship distance. Nice jab. Nice jab by Pinto. Just snapped the head of Mesa. But Mesa just somehow keeps his feet underneath him as we come to the end of round number 11. There's only one Super Bowl of cereal, and there's only one taste that makes it. Round number 12. Nobody 
expected it to go this far. On our cards, it is a close fight because of the knockdown round. Scored by the challenger, Pintor. Tim Ryan, Sugar Ray Leonard, and Gil Clancy watching two traditional Mexi Mexican warriors at work here. The challenger, Pintor, with a blue trim. The champion, Mesa, in silver. Tim, in a close fight like this, especially two qualified fighters, they rejuvenate. They get energy from somewhere because this round here is a big round for both fighters. It no. could decide the fight the way we see it. All right, another thing I'd like to mention is the fact that every time Pintor lands a punch, the crowd really lets out a roar. And the judges are human. Believe me, believe me, they listen to the crowd. And there's the roar of a combination from Pintor. Mind you, it was a good scoring combination. We have given six rounds to Mesa. Three rounds to Pintor, but those include two knockdowns in round five and a knockdown in round ten. And round eight could be a swing round. Could have gone either way. So, as we said, it's a close fight. The, eye, the minds of the judges, of course, uh, undetermined at this point. Mesa. They banged heads. They banged heads. Mesa going toe-to-toe -to -toe oh, without a leg under him. A big left by Pintor. He's in bad trouble again. Here he goes, Tim. What's keeping him up? What is holding Mesa off? He's ready to go, Gil. Every time he looks like he's ready to go, he punches back. Another snapping left from Pintor. Pintor's doing a beautiful job this round of counterpunching, which he wasn't doing earlier. Left hook by the champion. That backed up Pintor. I don't know where he's getting the energy from. Well, Mesa's throwing arm punches, Tim, and, and Pintor's putting his entire body behind every punch. Look at the right hand there. Left hook. Tim, we, at least the thing that's keeping Mesa up is the fact that he likes being called champ. That really makes the guy a better fighter. He wants to walk out with that championship. He knows what it feels like. He certainly is not ready to surrender it here. We're in the final round. Under a minute to go. The champion has been down three times, but here he is in a war against Lupe Pintor. Big combination. Ready to go. Rocks him back. Gil, you've said that several times, but he won't go. Tim, he's just standing straight still. He's stationary. He's ready, Tim. This has to be the round for Pintor if he should stay on top of this man. Look at the left My hook. My God, what, what courage Mesa has. Mesa somehow standing up against these sharp punches from Pintor. Look, he's wearing his man down. That sh Pintor shooting shots to the body. Under 30 seconds to go in the fight. Left hook to the head. Beautiful. Another one, but Mesa stays right there. He's punching back with no power, but he punches, and he will not fall down. This guy, Mesa, is showing all the heart of a champion, a true champion. You have to give him credit. But also Pinto. He, right, let's he's give Pinto right. credit. What Another left hand by Pinto. Under the 10-second mark, we go to the fight. There'll be no knockout. That's it. It's all over. What a display. Juan Mesa, Lupe Pintor, this is going to be tough to call as we see it. We'll be back with the decision live from Mexico City. Stay with us. We'll be updating sports news, but now let's go back for the decision of an amazing fight. Here's Tim Ryan of Mexico City. Gary Bender, we are back live in Mexico City where the ring has just collapsed. Senora, si, senores. Of all of the photographers El, and people have jumped in the ring. Here is the decision. The new champion mundial de peso super gallo, Lupe Pintor. Well, they did not announce the results, but they have given it to Lupe Pintor. And deservedly so. Lupe Pintor has won the WBC Super Bantamweight Championship with a 12-round decision, scoring knockdowns twice in the fifth round and once in the eighth round en route to dumping the champion Juan Mesa. And what a courageous display by both of these boxers and a great story with Lupe Pinto in his 63rd professional bout has won his second championship. The former Bantamweight champion who missed his effort against Wilfredo Gomez by being stopped in 